Hello, hello, this is Laiyosh. Today's gonna be a rather short and compact video because I'm gonna be talking about coffee. And how many of you drink coffee? I'm sure a lot of you drink coffee. You know, the the vast majority of like 80% of the world's population drink coffee. So it makes coffee the most widely known and consumed psychoactive ingredients, aside from like tea. And everyone knows the benefits of coffee, you know. It gets you up and going in the morning, it gets you hyped up, focused, uh, it, it improves your concentration, it, and it improves overall your behavioral performance. So therefore, so many people drink coffee in the morning to, you know, get themselves up and ready to tackle the day. But you kind of have to be careful about when to drink coffee at certain times because the best time to drink coffee is in the morning. Noon at the latest, I should say. But... As it goes into the afternoon, you kind of have to choose wisely when you should drink coffee because if you drink coffee at like 4 p.m. and then it's going to um, negatively affect your sleep quality and that's not good. And also, some people choose not to drink coffee because they don't like the scent or the taste, which is understandable. But what if there was a more convenient way to use the benefits of coffee and caffeine without consuming them? Well, that's what I'm here for, so... In this channel, I'm going to be talking about these interesting scientific and psychological information by implementing data from scientific studies. So if you want to watch more of my past and my future content, make sure to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned. So today's study is done by University of Toronto and Monash University, and they hypothesized that the coffee cues, the mere thought about coffee, may have a placebo effect on the human mind allowing arousal to be focused, alerted, and pretty much to elicit benefits of coffee without the actual ingestion of coffee or caffeine-related substance. And this is a really interesting study that cuts into it by a unique angle. Because if you think about it, the human mind can easily be manipulated by environmental cues. For example, seeing a McDonald's logo will make you impatient because McDonald's is all about speed, and that's the place to go when you're in a hurry. So, if the individual is aware of the benefits of coffee, their mind should be able to experience its effects, including but not limited to behavioral performance. The study performed four different experiments, where the samples were asked to think about coffee and its use, how drinking coffee in the morning woke them up and got them ready for the day. And afterwards, they were asked to mention other health benefits of coffee that they knew but wasn't covered in the article. These mentions included stuff like Coffee removes toxin from body, or it promotes mental health. Participants then completed a test called the Perceived Arousal Scale, where they reported their current arousal feelings, which included positive stuff like excited, active, or energetic, as well as negative stuff like fatigued, worn out, or drowsy. Of course, the positive stuff are all effects you can get from drinking coffee. And then they scaled each category into 9-point scale, ranging from 1, not at all, to 9, very much. And the results showed high scores on the perceived arousal scale, which meant that coffee cues, just imagining about coffee, just exposing yourself to the notion that coffee has many health benefits, led to an increase in participants' concentration and analytical ability. This is a pretty cool result because the samples have yet to have a single drop of coffee, but they're showing this boost of beneficial effect without having to have a cup of coffee. Another part of the experiment collected heart rates from the samples in order to overcome limitations that self-reported measures had. The results, again, showed significant support to the overall theory that coffee cues, without the actual ingestion, had an impact on arousal, in this case, the ability to focus and make analytical decisions. So the study analyzed it like this. So we not only drink coffee every day, but are exposed to the notion of coffee because there's coffee shops everywhere and, it, and it's kind of hard for you to live in a society without an exposure to the concept of coffee. Simply walking by a coffee shop may have a significant impact on human arousal along with decision making. The study concludes that arousal that comes from drinking coffee might not just be a physiological effect, but also due to psychological effect as well. So for any reason, you can't drink coffee physically, either because uh, you have to focus during the nighttime, or it makes you feel sick, or you just don't like the taste. Just imagining about coffee, or simply looking at a picture of a coffee, might help you increase your focus and be more analytical in the stuff that you're doing. So going to Starbucks or Pete's and not getting anything, and just you just sit down and study, that might have some beneficial effects on your, on your performance. 
Of course, it would be an annoyance to shop by just sitting there hogging the seat without buying anything, but in theory, having the presence of coffee can greatly help you, so you might not even have to be in a coffee shop. You can do something similar to this at home, where you make coffee, spread your room with the scent as much as possible, have the cup in front of you or on the desk wherever, and drink it as a reward of you finishing your work. So the important thing to note is that the human mind is pretty much dictated by placebos along with misconceptions, something that we feel the existence or the inexistence of, but the opposite is true in reality. And if we can deliberately detect these phenomena, it'll have a huge impact on our day-to-day -day lives. But if placebos work in the wrong way, it'll make us believe that what we're doing is beneficial to our lives, when in reality, it's not really doing a good job. This channel points out the wrong or the misguided norms of our lives and informs a new possibility by implementing scientific evidence and statistical data. And that's a pretty good segue to today's book recommendation. Today's book is You Are Not So Smart by David McCraney. It's a very good book that talks about various misconceptions and events that are caused by placebos. I should have it somewhere in my bookshelf, but I can't find it right now. Each chapter talks about the reason why, despite you feeling like you're a logical person, you're as just as deluded as the, as the person next to you. And by understanding this, by understanding the illogical nature of yourself, you will be able to understand that your illogical nature is nature itself. And it's the reason why we are able to function properly. This book served as a kind of like a pioneer work that got me into psychology to begin with. And yes, I know who am I to say this, but this book is really a phenomenal work. So you should definitely give it a read. As usual, the Amazon link is down below in my description, so check it out. Also, if this is your first time coming to this channel, there are like 20 more videos that you can watch. I use scientific evidence to tackle various sorts of problems that people face in their lives. So if you want to listen to what I have to say about the other elements of life, click the subs, watch my other videos, and comment what you like to hear in the future, and help this channel grow so I can continue to do what I love. And like always, thanks for watching. And stay tuned, because I'm going to come back for you. Bye!